Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The Privacy and Ethics Committee met again, and they were talking to some uh, subject matter experts, as the NDP likes to call them. And the shocking part for both sides was the news that came out of one of the experts. It was it's funny to watch. It's uh, but and it's good for me and you, which I also enjoy. So these industry experts were talking about the disinformation that's got the government all fired up. Depending on which side of the coin you want to talk to, you know, on one hand, it should the government be doing more, and on the other hand, should the government be doing less? And what I enjoyed was the response to the questions that they got. But we'll open with uh, the conservative MP Caputo because he's talking about the. Well, he, uh, you'll hear it. You'll hear it. When government sees things going awry, things going sideways, and they see misinformation and disinformation occurring, that government actually has an obligation to act. I, I take it you'd agree with that as well? Well, it depends on the nature of the action being contemplated, because some actions can be helpful and others can be counterproductive. Typically, a lot of information is transmitted through society without the government taking any particular action. Typically, a lot of information is transmitted without the government taking any action. I mean, that's just just one of the greatest statements you can hear. Because what he what he said there is that the government shouldn't be getting involved in what people tell one another and let the dust settle where it may, and <laughs> which you know bothers the whole narrative of the entire government because just depending on which side of the coin you're coming from, they're all looking for ways that they can tell justify interfering in what you and I talk about and how we discuss it. So to his credit, MP Caputo was staying a little bit on point. He wasn't going off in, on tangents like the liberals and the NDP were going. And he was talking about um, how information might be perceived by people based on what you and I will know as the, uh, the 11, right? That, that the, is accepting help from foreign governments to do things for them inside of Canada which is a subject matter that they keep going back to, depending on which side of the coin you want to listen to. However, what I like is the response of the experts, so that's what we're going to hear right now. When it comes to elected officials, uh, generally, I think it's in everybody's best interest to know whether they're elected officials, the people that they're putting an X beside when it comes to elections, have been willingly or semi-willingly participating in foreign interference. You'd agree with that? Yes. People in Canada are being expected to vote in the next 12 to 13 months, in all likelihood, upon these people. Does it not make sense for democracy, for the integrity of the system, and for foreign interference to be stymied at its root to expose this and shine the light on it. Does that not make a ton of sense? I do think one of the reasons that public disclosure can be helpful is when the lack of disclosure creates an environment in which selective leaks and rumors are running rampant. So MP Caputo asked if we should be exposing the, the names of the 11 liberals that are at the bare minimum 11 liberals that are accepting uh, money from foreign governments. and. I agree that they should be, I mean, don't let me fool you, the expert. He said that it just depends on the situation. And if the, if not exposing the names causes people to distrust the system, then they should be telling people what the names are, telling, uh, you know, releasing that information so that people will begin to stay, keep in trust of the system. So the liberals who are always running around trying to say that every, everything that, that you hear under the sun is somehow a, a negatively um, impacting democracy are ignoring the fact that they got 11 MPs that are a minimum of 11 MPs that are working for foreign governments, foreign states, and they don't understand why the population doesn't trust them. And Jack Mee Singh doesn't understand why the population is so fed up with him. This expert, however, says that those names should be released in the interest of democracy. It's what's best for democracy. Of course, I saved the best for last. The NDP, uh, MP Green, this guy is obsessed with the United States of America. Like he should just go run for office in the in the states. It's incredible, but he really, really blows up on him in this question. <laughs> it's funny. 
Mr. Bateman, just to, again, like I think about, you know, Elon Musk and his takeover of Twitter and the way in which he's shaping the discourse of this digital kind of public forum. Can you talk about non-state actors and the threat potentially to undermine our democracy? Yes, I would say actors other than foreign states are the main sources of mis- and disinformation. Uh, if you think about the perspective of an individual voter going through an election cycle, what's all the political information that he or she encounters? Almost none of it would be from any foreign actor. It would be from friends, families, community leaders, national politicians, local politicians, and the news media. That is really the information environment in some and substance. And so if any of those actors are spreading mis- and disinformation, as is frequent, that would be the primary problem facing democracies. <laughs> yeah, he stumbled through the, that was it. Like he gave up his time after that. So you heard MP Green try to throw shade on Elon Musk for the way that he's shaping the discord discourse by not in in any way shape or form influencing it right he's letting people say whatever they want as long as they don't call people names and all of that and then the experts said well really one of the biggest ways that people are influenced is by community leaders politicians and the media which are all solely and completely in the hands of the far left in canada so really what this guy is saying is as, as long as we can keep the politicians and the media from spewing misinformation we should be doing okay. The only problem, of course, is that the far left relies heavily on the, on the mainstream media to spew misinformation. They rely heavily on trying to convince everybody that, you know, the, being in the far right may, or in the right wing of it all it somehow makes you some kind of a bad person. All the while, the left is silencing you, censoring you, telling you that, you know, moving you into little groups left, right, and center, literally changing their story right in front of your face. <coughs> and this gentleman who was basically from the United States, he said a bunch of times that he's not too familiar with the system in Canada, but he does have a paper written there. You could see it over his shoulder oh, on disinformation and how to detect it. And of course, a couple of things that he said were that we should be empowering the media, but he doesn't understand the system in Canada. So in Canada, of course, we have the mainstream media has been bought and sold and any media that is not bought and sold is can't get in the room, right? They can't, they won't, the politicians won't speak to them. So now what you have is a situation where a very few people are listening to the mainstream media and the rest of us are like, these guys don't have a clue. They're not being honest with us. The amount of scandal that could have been exposed. I mean, think about Watergate and how the, how much effort the press played in that story. Think about all of the scandals that have been brought to light by the media over, over the history of time. And here we have these corporations deciding that they're going to control the narrative in such a way that it will allow them to make money off the taxpayer, control them in such a way that it's going to make you vote for their friends so that they will keep continually perpetually having all of this power to wreck our lives, to siphon off all, embezzle all the money that we make, to make rents through the roof so that a select few are making huge amounts of money. So that you're just too poor and preoccupied to be worried about what these leaders, quote unquote leaders, and I use that term loosely, are doing to us and to our families and our friends and our country. And this gentleman said it right back at Green, who thought he was going to get all, every, hear the guy talk about how, you know, while the problem is, of course, Twitter or the problem is, a, you know, TikTok or, and he didn't hear any of that. What he said flat out was, the reason that the most common people get their information from their friends, family, community leaders in the newspaper. They don't follow what's being said on the websites. And it's the politicians in the newspapers in this country that are magnifying all of the misinformation and disinformation. So I suppose what we should be really doing is stopping, like Facebook does, stop allowing media on the platform altogether. We should just keep the media off YouTube, keep the media off um X, or at least the mainstream corporation stuff, we should keep all, we should just instantly turn off all of the politicians' X accounts because they, they slam X, but I'm sure if you go on X, you'll find that Green has got a very active account. He talks about it, but yet he's on there every day. Same with Gilbo, same with Trudeau, same with Freeland, all of them. They slam it on one hand and then they're on there typing away left, right, and center on the other. I guess if we just turned off all of their accounts, 
Twitter would be a much easier place to get along because they wouldn't have any of these politicians and these community leaders spreading misinformation. I want the 11 names released. I think that it's better. It's time that Canada heard who it is that's accepting money from foreign governments. I believe that Canadians have the right to know. And I believe that if the government truly wants to try to recover the trust and the faith of the voting population of the voting public, it's time for them to come clean with all of the corruption that they have currently happening right now inside of their government. All of the 11 people that are working actively for other countries, not this one. That's just my opinion. You can leave me what your opinion is down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.